Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Penford Sports Podcast. We are here. It's your host, Adam Malachuk, along with my co-host, Austin Rahilly. And we're here to talk about all about week two and what a week two it was. Let's uh, let's do this, Austin. Let's review the scores from week two. Uh, it started off Thursday night. Big game. The Chiefs taking on the Chargers. That was they a close up, one. It was a close one. And honestly... I was very happy with what I saw out of Justin Herbert. The guy's got fight in him. Yep. Um, to be able to play like that against an offense like the Chiefs, against a defense like the Chiefs, um, you have to give Herbert credit for that. However, the Chiefs did beat the Chargers 27-24. to Mahomes just using his magic. That's, that's what he does. Uh, then we have the Patriots. They beat the Steelers 17-14. to That's your team. Yep. You've got to be pretty happy about that. Oh, yeah. Uh, Mac Jones had a couple of nice throws. We're going to talk about one of them, and, and it's in one of our top ten plays. Oh, yeah. We had the Giants beating the Panthers. That is my team. Go Giants. We are on a roll. You're happy about that I'm one? I'm very happy. We're starting the season 2-0. <laughs> and oh. I'm very happy about that one. Obviously, the first game, winning that against the Titans, was, uh, that was a big game. And it was a big game. Just keeping that momentum going against the Panthers was great. Barkley came up big in that game. It's because Barkley always comes up big. <laughs> then we have the That's Jets true. beating the Browns. I didn't know the Jets could win a football game. I was a little surprised. It was only by one one point, but uh, I I was a little surprised the Jets actually won a football game. But yeah, I think Flacco's make, making a comeback. Oh gosh, <laughs> more like Flack. No, Flack. No. We got the Jaguars beating the Colts this twenty-four one. to zero. This one, my I boy. Am, I am surprised about. My, really. Yeah. You didn't believe in my man Trevor Lawrence? No. You didn't believe in Trevor? He's got the, the magical flow. <clears throat> it looks... And he's a man of God. Is he really? He is a man of God, yeah. Proud of you. Proud of me. <laughs> Be proud of him. <laughs> no, but this game was... Jaguars beating the Colts. Jags has not beaten the Colts in a very long time. Yeah, but we love to see young quarterbacks win, and that's what I like to see for Trevor yeah. Lawrence. He needed yeah. something. He needed something. We had the Dolphins beating the Ravens. That was a crazy game. That was a final score of 42 to 38, and, and there were some <laughs> crazy plays in that game. Tyreek Hill was a big help. Tyreek Hill was crazy. But that's not even the craziest thing. The, the first kickoff was crazy. Oh, with uh, Devin Duvernay? 101 yard field goal, uh, not field goal, 101 yard uh, kick return for a touchdown just to start the game off. He was named the special team specialist for last year. That's for the crazy. Ravens. That's crazy. <clears throat> then we had the Buccaneers beating the Saints 20 to 10. People were telling you and your fantasy team to bench Brady because he couldn't, co- he couldn't compete with the Saints. Defense. I should have, though. Mac Jones had more points than Brady. <laughs> Yeah, I should have. But did you did you play Mac Jones? No, I benched him. Oof. Yeah, that's brutal. That's <clears throat> brutal. And then uh, we had the Lions beating the Commanders, thirty six to twenty seven. And I'm what not a, surprised. What a day for Aiden Hutchinson. I didn't I didn't see that one. He had two sacks. Uh, I think like three tackles. He had a good game. Aiden the workhorse Hutchinson. Oh, so yeah. we had the the Lions beating the Commanders, thirty six to twenty seven. 49ers beat the Seahawks 27 to 7. It was a good game. Oh yeah. Rams beat the Falcons 31 to 27. That was a close game for the Falcons. It was a very close game. Cardinals beating the Raiders 29 to 23. Broncos beat the Texans 69 to 3 or 16 to 9. <clears throat> Cowboys beat the Bengals 20 to 17 with a backup QB with Cooper Rush. And honestly, Joe Burrow did not have a good game. He's not looking good this year. He's really not. And I hope it's just early because I love Joe Burrow. So I hope it's just (laughs) I hope it's it's just early early game jitters, but yeah, that was was not it was not a good game for Joe Burrow. Definitely not. He looked good though going into the stadium. (laughs) <laughs> he always does. 
Packers beat the Bears 27-10 as a so divi- this is, division rival. And this is how I can say for a fact that they did rig game one because of the vaccination <laughs> thing. <laughs> Just like I talked about in the last episode. Yep. Bills beat the Titans 41-7. to Yeah, that was wild. The Bills did what the Bills do. Josh Allen is a genius. They trampled him. Uh, Josh Allen had a great game. Stephon Diggs had a great game. And uh, the Titans had a terrible game. (laughs) Um, uh, There's there's not really much else to say about it. No, seriously. Nothing. Eagles beat the Vikings 24-7. Yeah. I could see the Eagles beating the Vikings. But not 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 that, that big, especially not after the game the Vikings played last week. Yeah, seriously. So I, we're gonna have a guy on to to talk about that a little later in the show. So that is your week two recap <coughs> of uh, of the scores. But let's talk a little bit about some drama that happened this this past week. I love drama. Time. Let's talk about the fight that happened on Sunday. Saints and Buccaneers. It was wild. We had <laughs> Lattimore getting lippy. With Tom Brady. And then, boom, out of nowhere comes Mike Evans. Big body Mike Evans. <laughs> he bodied Lattimore. <laughs> it was nuts. Tom Brady's this guy. You mess with Tom Brady, you, you get the beans. Yeah, but I also heard that Lattimore and Mike Evans have beef. Yeah, since yeah. last year. Yeah, it's nuts. Well, I, I've always hated Lattimore. You and Mike, you and Mike Evans both. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, Mike Evans actually got ejected from that game and now will serve a one-game suspension. Um, That could be big next week for the Buccaneers. We'll see what happens with that, with no Mike Evans. Also, the Bucs, they can't really stay out of the drama. Um, Tom Brady, the guy, the 45-year-old stud. Yep. We talked last week about how the rumors of them uh, getting a split, him and his wife. Well, rumors have it that now Tom and Giselle apparently are living in separate houses amidst the marriage split rumors. And actually, since hearing this news, I have slid into Giselle's DMs. (laughs) We are hoping that something fruitful and beautiful comes out of that. Um, But I got a lot to compete with. Hmm. Uh, Tom Brady. Um, Definitely. But well, I, I guess when you shoot your shot. You got to shoot your shot. That's right. And that's why I'm in the DMs. Yeah. On a bit of a darker note, Andy Reid's son, Britt Reid, agreed to a plea deal on his 2021 DUI that left a young child severely injured. Britt admitted to being drunk when he crashed his truck into multiple vehicles in February of 2021 and caused five-year-old Ariel Young to suffer traumatic brain injury. I regret what I did. I made a huge mistake, Reed said. I apologize to the family. I didn't mean to hurt anyone that night. Reed will face no more than four years in prison, and the family of Ariel Young is outraged. And honestly, just and rightly so. I, I mean, guess that's what you get for driving drunk. It... I, I understand why the family's outraged too. You know, he, he gives a little half apology. Right. More like I'm sorry I got caught, not I'm sorry something happened. Um and now he's only serving four years, if if not less. Um it, it, it I'm surprised he's only serving yeah, it, four. It, well, it, it kinda of blows my <clears throat> mind. I think again it, it's there's something about our justice system that we do have the best justice system in the in the world, but Something about celebrities getting somewhat of a pass has never sat well with me. No. Um, I think if it was any anyone else, they would have gotten way more than four years. But because it being a high-profile case, I think that uh, Britt's getting a little, a little... He's getting it a little easy on this one. Yeah. I also think the Reed family should probably do something for the Young family. Um, oh, yeah. The Reeds have tons of money. Um, They're loaded. Yeah. So I I fully respect the young family being outraged and devastated and, and annoyed. Um I I would be too. Um because the, the they feel there's a lack of justice there. There definitely is. Yeah, no, hundred <clears> percent. 
The Colts waived Blankenship. Did you see that? No, I did not. Yeah, it was... It was... Uh, I don't understand why, but their kicker, who has... He hasn't been bad this He's season. He's fairly decent. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I, I never understood... You know, like, there was, there was never... There wasn't any news, I should say, about him being bad. Right. But the Colts waived him. Um, I'm not sure why. I tried to figure it out. There was no information. Who's the backup? I have no clue. I don't even know. Yeah. <clears throat> so he's been waived. We'll see what the Colts do uh, for uh, for their kicking. And then we have the Cowboys. Dak Prescott injured, broken hand. Could return week six. That's what I'm hearing. Dad, did he? I think he got surgery. Could return week six. Yes. Steelers. T.J. Watt is expected to miss six weeks from his pec energy. Pec injury, not pec energy. His pec <laughs> injury. But he did share a gif with his fans that was essentially, you know, just kind of a lighthearted gif. It was a it was a gif of Arnold Schwarzenegger, you know, from the Terminator <laughs> saying, I'll be back. Oh yes. Yeah. I'll be back. <laughs> And so TJ Watt will be back hopefully sooner rather than later. <clears throat> Another injury we got Seahawks Jamal Davis likely out for the season. That is a big hit to the Seahawks. They have nobody. Yeah. Yeah, it's a big hit to them. And then another person out for the season <clears throat> that just got injured on Sunday, Trey Lance gone but never forgotten. See you later. See you later. <laughs> He's out for the season. Jimmy and G did good. He did get, he did get, he did. Yeah. We're going to talk a little bit more about that. You're right. Yeah, I'm, stu- <laughs> I'm stuttering over here. I'm stuttering over here. <laughs> Kyler Murray got slapped in the face. No, I didn't see that. <laughs> yeah. So after, uh, after the Cardinals won in overtime, he was celebrating and he ran up, and there were these people in the stands like going like this, and one guy just went boom right to the face. But I think it was on accident, like watching the video. But Kyler Murray got all mad. He was like, he like starts looking at the stands. He turned around. He goes, "Well, the thing is with Kyler, he can't act big. Yeah, he's, he's small. F- he's so three small. foot two. <laughs> so <laughs> he's so small. Right. And then Dane Jackson was taken off the field in an ambulance Monday night, suffering a neck injury." Uh, he was actually released from the hospital, though, on Tuesday. And after multiple tests, uh, Jackson avoided major injuries um, to his neck and his spinal cord. So um, that's good news for him. What a, what a devastating loss, though, to the Bills. It was it was scary. I, I seen the, the video on YouTube. Yeah. And it looked like his whole neck just Yeah. I was, wa- I was watching the game live, and it was like there was just a... a just like a, a deafening silence right. in the whole state. It just got real quiet. And then you had the stupid announcers that were like, now this isn't something you want to see, John. And it was like, all right, dude, just <laughs> shut up, bro. Like something serious happened. But that is our injury report for last week. This episode is brought to you by Penford Media. Penford Media is a multi-creator platform focused on providing enter- entertaining content for all ages. The Penford Sports Podcast is a proud creator of Penford Media, and if you think you have what it takes to join the Penford Media creative team, apply today at their website, penfordmedia.com. If you want to create quality content and aren't sure where to start, visit penfordmedia.com. Let's talk about our Sunday fits, the dress for the best, the Sunday's best, the sexiest in the office Najee Harris on Sunday did those you see his cleats custom cleats are amazing crazy for, I, I do love those for Latino National Heritage Month those Mexico cleats bro they were tough they were tough I'm I surprised you didn't get fined though cause some players can't yeah I give him a 10 out of 10 a, for that you know a uh, a custom thing it's yes. not in regulation yet. yeah yeah 10 out of 10 for him. Oh, yeah. Malcolm Rodriguez, he came uh, He came into the stadium looking like he just got off Dutton Ranch. <laughs> looking like a real cowboy. Yellowstone. Probably, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Probably listening to... Uh, Should have been a cowboy. <laughs> 10 out of 10. What, what do you rate his fit? You know, I am country. 
So I do country. like it. Yeah. That's definitely on the upside for him. I go 10 out of 10 as well. 10 out of 10. <clears throat> Donovan Jones. <laughs> this guy just looks like a Minecraft creeper. I got to give him a 6 out of 10. I'm going 4. <laughs> That's it looks crazy. hideous, bro. It's yeah, it's not great. It's not great. Trevor Lawrence, Your guy. my guy, my guy. He looked like uh, he looked like he was about to lead worship at uh, Hillsong, Los Angeles. A good fit, nonetheless. I give him eight out of ten. Nine, nine. That's a good fit. He's a stud, bro. He's got the hair, you know. Robbie Anderson. He just kind of looks like he's one of the island boys. I'm an island point. boy. Just trying to make it. I'm an island boy <laughs> in the suns where I'm staying. What a what a joke. He gets a right. two out of ten. I'm not even rating him. Yeah. <laughs> then we got my my boy, my twin, my doppelganger, Joe Burrow. My doppelganger. This man looked like he was about to close the biggest real estate deal in Dubai mm-hmm. since 2016. Ten out of ten. I go 10 out of 10 yeah, as well. guy's dude. a stud. Oh, yeah. George Pickens, he just looked like a moron. Um, I can't even... Uh, I can't even rate him, honestly. I, I just... Uh, I can't rate him. Zero out of 10. Looks like he's like... I don't know, about to rob a bank or something. Yeah, dude. it's not a good look for him. No. And then Aaron Donald. Apparently, he thought he was like going to be playing in Denver or something. Cold weather parka. Um, I don't know what's up with that. He looks like an idiot. He's in Los Angeles with Los Angeles with like this huge winter jacket on. I give him uh, a five out of ten. What do you, what do you say to him? What do you want to I say? I like Aaron? that. Yeah, but not in in San Francisco or, or not San Francisco, not in uh, Los Angeles. I don't know. Bro, it's you know it was like eighty. Well, yeah, degrees. no, it kind of looks like a fur fur coat. It's like no, it's like uh, <clears throat> like well, I can only see half because this thing. Oh, there it goes. It um, looks like he's about to premiere in a new, new movie, Troy. Yeah, he looks the, like, like a Viking. Five out of ten. Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> he looked like he was about to play music at a, at a coffee shop <laughs> for about an hour and a half. Just play some real soft covers, mm. Kings of Leon or something. Six out of ten. Oh, five. And then last but certainly not least, we got Tom Brady. The GOAT. Brady must really be going through it. Um, he had his pillow with him, so I guess he's probably sleeping at the stadiums at this point <laughs> after the split. <laughs> Stadium surfing, you know. While I'm keeping his pillow at home warm with Giselle. I hate you. <laughs> All right. So that is your Sunday's best Penford Sports edition. Let's talk about our top 10 plays of the week. Let's get into it. Let's get rolling. My number five pick was the Jets' onside kick to give them their winning drive. Let's take a look at this. Great man trying to convert. Got his onside kick. He goes near side of the field. Who's got it? It's still loose. I think the the Jets Jets got it. Honestly, no signal yet. I, they say Jets football. I love a good onside kick. Oh, yeah. I actually, every time I play Madden with Mitchell Mullet, who we were supposed to have as a caller tonight, um, but he can't because he's got his amateur men's league football practice. Now, as someone who, who <laughs> played for this men's league, is it safe to say it's kind of a joke? I mean, it is, but it's not. Just be honest with the people. Is it kind of a joke? You don't get paid. Well, no, it's it's all for fun. You know, yeah, but at what guy, point, guys but at, that but don't at, get into, like, But at college, what point do you have to realize your career ended in high school? But, you know, as a football player, I know that I respect it's that, but at, but at what point do you have to realize, okay, I peaked in high school? It's hard. Yeah, it's hard to okay, quit something I understand, you love. I understand you doing it because you did it, like, a year out of high school. But there's like 30 year olds playing in this men's league. There's 40 year olds playing. Oh my gosh. I don't even want to talk about this anymore. (laughs) But I love a good onside kick. I do it to him every time in Madden. He hates it. I love it. I have yet to play him. He's not worth playing. He sucks. I beat him every time. Your number five pick. What was your number five pick? 
Cooper Rush pitched to Tony Pollard for 47 yards Let's take with, a, at this. with an extra effort to reach the goal line for the Cowboys' touchdown. Let's, uh, let's take a look at this. <clears throat> they toss it. Pollard. Pollard finds an opening. Pollard inside the 20. And Pollard down. Yeah. Is he across? Touchdown, Dallas. There's Honestly, an underrated guy. So well executed. Oh, yeah. So well executed. My number four pick, we got to go with my man Aaron Rodgers. He had a touchdown pass to Lazard, <laughs> Alan Lazard, five-yard touchdown pass, but this thing was crazy. Let's, let's give it a watch. Jones already has two. Rodgers, touchdown, like, Lazard. How did he get it through the middle like that? There was a guy everywhere. Right. And he zipped that thing into Alan Lazard. I don't... It was mesmerizing. I don't... What I'm stuck on is how Alan Lazard caught it. Caught that. it. That's what I'm saying. He was like, that he was, like caught it on the ground, basically. That was a, a heater. It was it was insane. <clears throat> my four... My fourth... Jeffrey Simmons knocked the ball free from Renfro. Byron Murphy Jr. returned Hunter Renfro's fumble. 59 yards for a touchdown with 3.51 left in overtime to win the game. Let's watch this. Second and 10, quick pass outside, and that is complete. That is Moreau, and Moreau fighting for yardage. The ball is loose again. Uh -oh. Picked up by That's the Cardinals. This is Byron Murphy to the end zone. Oh, yeah. touchdown and and right after that, 1,000% IQ. Right after that is actually when uh, Kyler Murray went and was celebrating and got slapped in the face. <laughs> My number three pick, we got DeAndre Swift. Big pass from Jared Goff. He stumbles, gets back up. That, and one, then, that one was amazing. And then he just like runs <clears throat> through the whole defensive line. Let's let's give it a watch. Almond Ross St. Brown, excuse me. Third down at 15. Goff's pass. Caught by Swift. And There's like six guys there. Oh, yeah. He fell and scored. That's what I'm saying. He <laughs> fell, got up, took the lock to the end zone. And he's, that's, he's very good. Yeah, that's He fits really well in Detroit. 100%. Detroit's, Detroit's going to be a, a, a fun a fun team to watch this year. That's it's, weird. Sure. It, it's weird. It's weird saying Because they never that. are. Right. And we'll have Zach to tell us all about that in a bit. All right, what was your number three? Uh, Herbert throws a 37-yard pass to Mike Williams with a one-handed catch for the touchdown. All right, let's give it a watch. That was beautiful. Let's see. Five. To the end zone he goes. And can he one-handed in the end Super zone to Mike incredible. Williams? Yes. Mike Williams, what a dog. Right. What a dog. <clears throat> and Justin Herbert, like I said earlier, the guy has heart. Like He's a stud. Guy's a stud. He's got great hair. He's kind of a sexy-looking dude. Um, <laughs> you love to see it. He fits right there in L.A., dude. Yeah, 100%. Coming in at number two, we got Nelson Aguilar. Touchdown pass from your boy, Mac Jones. Should have played him in fantasy. <laughs> Each team has two timeouts remaining. We're down at 30 seconds to go. Jones, step, this dials up, deep ball. He must oh, him. what a catch! He must Nelson him. Aguilar, he spectacular! Must Way up there. <clears throat> That's incredible. All right, what's your number two? My number two is Josh Allen throws a 46-yard bomb to Stephon Diggs where he dives and makes an incredible catch for the touchdown. All right, let's give it a watch. The Swiss Army knife deal. Here's Allen on second and ten. Stepping up into the logo and throw. He's got Diggs wide open. And touchdown. Stephon Diggs, dude. I can't talk about this kid enough. No, I can't. He's, He's the perfect wide receiver. He's so good. <clears throat> He's the perfect. So good. All right, my number one pick. We had the 101-yard kickoff return touchdown by the Ravens, Devin DuVernay. This. DuVernay. Is it DuVernay? Yep. Yeah. Devin DuVernay. <laughs> and the Ravens, and away we go from Maryland. Just a stand -up. DuVernay yeah, will play it out. <laughs> Getting a block from Harrison. All the way he goes. 103 yards. All right, hit us with your uh, your number one pick. My number one pick, top plays. Tariq Woolen, the rookie, 
blocked a field goal, and Mike Jackson ran it back for an 80-yard touchdown. Let's give it a watch. Uh, another chip shot try. From 20, and it's blocked. That's a live ball into the hands of Mike That's Jackson. And he gets past Wisniewski. Tariq Woolen comes up huge. The rookie with the block. And Mike Jackson with his first NFL touchdown. <laughs> and that has turned the game around, perhaps. Well, Woolen just coming off the edge. All right, so those are our top 10 <clears throat> combined for the week. Let's talk about your player of the week. My player of the week is Jimmy Garoppolo. And I have to say Jimmy G strictly because of this. He was pretty much without the team for um, all of the spring training. Oh, yeah. And he came in after Trey Lance got injured, threw for 106 yards. He was 8 for 11 and a touchdown, again, without being with the team all of spring. Just so that like is throwing somebody in a pool and going and swim. Right. That is my uh, <clears throat> player of the week. My player of the week is Cooper Cooper Cup. 11 receptions for 108 yards with two touchdowns. Incredible. Cooper oh, Cup yeah. is an animal. He is. Just the I guy does him. not mess around. I'm trying to get him in my fantasy league, but the guy doesn't want to cooperate. Tra- trade him. <laughs> <laughs> this episode is brought to you by Alpine Unlimited Co. Their mission is to provide comfortable and stylish clothing for a community of people who love nature and enjoy spending their time in the great outdoors. You can check out their designs at alpineunlimitedco.com. Listeners can now use code PEN10 to receive 10% off your entire order. That's P-E-N-10 to receive 10% off your entire order. Alpine Unlimited is a proud sponsor of the Penford Sports Podcast. (laughs) (laughs) All right, well, at this point, we got a couple callers. Uh, I want to get Zach on the line first to talk about everything Detroit with us. Gentlemen, how are we? We are fantastic. Oh, how yeah. are you? I'm fantastic. It's great to hear from you, Grat, from you guys. Big week from the Detroit Lions, and I'm excited to talk about it. All right, then let's do that. Let's talk all about it. What did you like? What didn't first you time. like? Tell me about your boys in blue. Let me just jump in, Adam. First things first. We said to watch out for Aiden Hutchinson as an impact player last week, we and did. guess what he was this week, baby? An, an impact, impact player. player. Two sacks out there, just a wolf. Sorry to swear on live. Uh, <laughs> go ahead and cut that out if you will. Um, who else was looking hot? Jared Goff. 200. Surprising. And I, yeah, especially for someone who peaked so early in his career. Exactly. We also said last week that he peaked at the Rams. He has something to say about that. 256 yards, four touchdowns, zero interceptions. A strong win for the Detroit Lions. We're one and one, baby. Yeah, he must have heard our podcast and was like, I got to prove these boys wrong. Oh, for sure. That's one way to do it. Yeah. So, who's not listening? What are your predictions for uh, the Lions uh, this this next week, week three? I mean, um, it looks like week three, the uh, the Lions are going to be playing the Vikings, and uh, which is interesting. Oh. I want to hear your predictions right before we get our next caller on, who is a Vikings fan. Well, the Minnesota Vikings quite possibly. The most pathetic team in the entire <laughs> national football. <laughs> Looking for a massive blowout this week. Look for Aiden Hutchinson to just feast off of that offensive line. I'm going six sacks for the for the Lions this coming up week, and I'm saying 31 to six. Oh wow, uh, Zach, I want you to stay on the line right here. We got another caller. If if Andy, you could join right now, Andy, who is a, a, a Vikings fan. I want you. I want to hear you guys talk a little bit about you know. Let, let's talk about the the wild quotes that Zach just made about the Vikings being the worst football team in the, the NFL. Pathetic. Path- yeah, the most the pathetic. The most pathetic well, team. Well, I would say that those are pretty strong words considering the Vikings' uh, new head coach, new front, front office, and not to mention we have an all-star receiving t- side with Justin Jefferson, Adam Thielen, Dalvin Cook. So I feel – offensively we're probably stronger than the Detroit Lions at this point. Uh, Don't forget you excluding do have- excluding Kirk Cousins. Kirk Cousins I would say is still a weak link for our offensive line. Always has been. KJ Osborne is looking good too. Listen, all yeah. those that you were shoveling off, Andy, mean nothing to me. Okay. Those guys are all one star recruits coming out of 
North Dakota. Guys can't play football. They can't run with their shoes tied up, all right? Get them off the field. Lions are going to sweep the floor with those Vikings this week, baby. So, all right. Yeah. If that's your prediction, I'm just saying, Justin Jefferson is like a first – isn't he a first-round pick? Yes. Yeah, he's a yes, first he is. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. defensively for the you know Vikings – the first-round pick, Andy? Andrew Luck. Where's he at right now? He's selling cars, bro. <laughs> he's selling mean cars. First-round pick means nothing, bro. Hey, Zach. Yeah, well, you got you guys lost Matthew Stafford, who went to go win a Super Bowl last year. So <laughs> We shuffled Just him off, bro. We traded him. We didn't lose anybody, bro. We did a fair trade. We got a couple of draft picks. We got Jared Goff, who we thought had peaked, but he's back now, baby. Watch the Lions to make a deep run into the playoffs this year. Hey, just, Zach, did you say that Aiden Hutchinson is going to have six sacks solo? Man, I just said that the the entire oh, okay. defense from the Lions, if Aiden gets all six, so <laughs> be it. <laughs> That's incredible. That is incredible. Well, uh, we're excited to see that. Andy, I do have to call you out on a couple of wild claims you made um, this past week uh, over text with me. Um, you said, first of all, the Vikings are going to go for 12 more wins this year. That, that was after your first win. Um, it's not looking good so far. Uh, and then you said you're going to win the North Conference. Do you still stand by that? I do, and I'll tell you why. The NFC is kind of weak this year, to be honest. Mm-hmm. There's not really a whole lot of strong teams in the nfc you know maybe aaron Rodgers, maybe the packers but they got a couple rookie receivers that he's not really (laughs) clicking with very well this year uh you saw that in the first game against us he was kind of ghosting them he wasn't really throwing the ball to these rookies he was you know they they haven't built very much trust there and honestly like i don't see much in the chicago bears their their offensive line sucks Detroit, maybe they'll make it to the playoffs, but I don't think they're going to make it past Zach. Minnesota. I mean, I mean, not Zach. Uh, Austin, you look like you're just itching to say. I, <laughs> I'm holding. I'm biting my tongue on this one. Say no, don't. When he said, tongue. "This is your show." Zach. The yeah, uh, Austin. NFC this is, is looking, our show. You said you correct him. <laughs> the NFC is looking weak. I'm sorry, but I'm going to have to disagree. Yeah, you got Brady. You got yep. the best defense in the in the league. You got the second best defense in New Orleans. Of course, Brady don't care about that. <laughs> <laughs> but um, when did he ever? It NFC is looking far from weak. I would say yes. yes. Yeah, but in comparison to the AFC, you gotta you know there's quite a contrast there. I agree. Quite a contrast. I I definitely agree on that. Zach, you sound like you're itching to say something as well. I mean, I just think. Anytime that someone says uh, the NFC is looking rough this year, uh, hasn't seen the Pro Bowl yet. Let me tell you what. When that game comes out weeks before the Super Bowl, guess who's going to be wiping the floor with the AFC, my guy? It's going to be the NFC, okay? You got all the – you got Aaron Rodgers, okay? You got Tom Brady, like Austin just said, bro. The Vikings add nothing to that uh, – Division of football. Yeah, but Tom Brady's O line is is kind of rough right now. You got to be honest. The it's only thing won. holding that team together at the start is him against one so of the best defense. Right. So is but it doesn't matter, dude. It doesn't matter what's rough with Tom. He's gonna win because he's a winner, bro. Yeah, yeah, I agree. He's gonna win against Aaron Rodgers next week, and he's gonna I win against that. the Vikings, and then he's gonna win the, the NFC division because <laughs> he is that guy. And I'm sorry, but um, the Vikings just aren't that team. Kirk Cousins is not that guy. I don't. I agree. They need to do something. I, I don't see with them keeping Kirk Cousins around. I do not see the Vikings going far. That is their biggest flaw they have right now. They have great receivers. They have guys like Justin Jefferson. But the problem is, you can have weapons, right? If you, you don't have, have no a quarterback, those weapons. If you don't have a, if you don't have a decent quarterback, but you have a lot of weapons. What does doesn't it, mean it doesn't nothing. matter anything. No. I agree. I 100% agree with you guys. And I will say for our D-line, it's they they lose stamina after the first half of a game. Mm. They're, of that. <laughs> yeah, well, that's what I'm saying. Could be your advantage on Sunday with the Lions is our defense loses stamina after the first half. And they Both just kind of have fat guys on their teams, bro. Everybody's got fat guys. They yeah. play on the line. Southern Vermont Storm is a fat guy. His name is Mitchell Mullet. Oh. 
Um, <laughs> Andy, you said a, you, you got a little heated uh, in, in our text chain this past week. Um, you said, and I quote, I am outraged. I'm paying enough already for each month for prime time football, and now I have to go to Amazon to get a subscription to watch games? Yeah, you, you I, seem I little, honestly think you that's... You seem a little upset about that. I think it's a little crazy considering all the different networks that already cover football yeah. during the week. It's like, I know Amazon wants to get in on it because there's a lot of money to be had, but... <clears throat> Zach, what advice know? would you give Andy struggling with this uh with this this you know position he's in right here sure sure yeah i would say first of all um go out there and just get a job you know there's lots of companies that are hiring (laughs) all time you need to put in the work pay taxes be a be a good citizen in this country and pay for you know all the homeless people on the streets so if you got to get a job to pay for your uh, nbc abc amazon hulu whatever the is go out there make some money pay you know, for it watch your entertainment and shut your mouth unless you're on a podcast and then spill it spill it all baby spill it all only fans is, is an option <laughs> well i will say i think sunday against the lions it's gonna be probably about 35 to i don't know 28 vikings so a touchdown so a touchdown win for the lions you're saying no, it's going to be a touchdown win for us, but I think it is going to be a high-scoring game because I do see Jared Goff throwing for quite a few touchdowns. Um, Where are they? But I, are they I think Detroit? our D-line will hold them. Where are they playing? Are they at Detroit? I'll be – Jared Goff has two good games in a row, guys. <laughs> are you retracting your statement from earlier? Dude, no, 31-6, to <laughs> six, but Jared Goff is not going to be the one getting it done. <laughs> It's Come gonna on, be the dude. workhorse, Aiden Hutchinson, sacking <laughs> Kirk Cousins the, left and right. It's gonna be the huts, baby. All right, fellas. Well, thanks for coming on. We wish you, uh, well, Zach, we wish you best of luck in Detroit winning. Andy, we can only say so much <laughs> about you after roasting uh, the NFC and some of our favorite teams yeah. and players. But best of luck to you both, of you guys. Thanks for coming on today. Thank you. Go All right, see you boys. Peace. They should I'll, start their own podcast. Yeah, no, that was that was heated. <laughs> We're going to definitely have them on. That's good for views for sure. All right, we got a couple more things to talk about before we wrap up. So let's talk about uh, our current standings for the NFL. All right, here's our current standings for the NFL. In the AFC East, in first place tied, we got... The Dolphins and the Bills. If you told me that one day the Dolphins and the Bills would be tied for first place ever, I would have looked at you in the face and I would have said, Wrong. (laughs) That's not going to (laughs) happen. But here it is unfolding before our eyes. Tied for last place, we got the Jets and the Patriots. I know that's a little bittersweet for you. I want to cry. Go ahead. You can come here. Come here. Come here. It's gonna be okay. <laughs> AFC West, first place, we got the Chiefs. Of course. Uh, in second place, tied, we have the Chargers and the Broncos. And then in last place, with a record of 0 2, we have the Raiders. AFC North. We got a three-way tie for first place. It's the Steelers, the Ravens, and the Browns. And then the only team on this list that was really great last year. And doing and nothing doing but dog crap. It's the Bengals. <coughs> yeah. The 0-2. Record. Now, this one. AFC South. If you would ever told me that the Jags would be in first place, they, I would have spat in your face. Yeah, the Jaguars are in first place. <laughs> Texans are uh, are tied for second with the Colts. And then uh, the Titans are in last place with a record of oh. That's crazy. Too. It is pretty wild. It is pretty wild. National Football Conference, the <laughs> NFC. In the NFC East, tied for second for first place, we got my boy, the Giants, Saquon, Daniel Jones, uh, and then the Eagles, boo. Uh, and then tied for last <laughs> place, we have the Commanders and the Cowboys. NFC West in first place, 
everybody. They're all tied. They're all tied for first <laughs> and last place. We got the 49ers, the Rams, the Cardinals, and the Seahawks. They're all tied too. And then same with the NFC North, Vikings, Packers, Lions, Bears. And then the NFC South, we got our boy Tom Brady getting it done. Yep. First place, 2-0. <clears throat> um, second place, we got the Saints. And then tied for last place, the Panthers and the Falcons. But let's do this. Let's quickly give our predictions for what we think is going to happen next week. We have a lot of good <coughs> games coming up. Week three, we're just going to do wins or lot. Who wins? Who loses? Thursday, September twenty second. Steelers and Browns. Who's winning it? You kind of got Browns winning. I got Browns as well. That's that's a tough one. Yeah, hundred percent. Sunday, mm-hmm. Bills at Dolphins. Oh, I got Bills. I have Bills, yeah. Just uh, because they're putting up massive points. Yeah, it's crazy. <clears throat> Bengals, at, uh, Bengals and Jets. I got Jets. I got Bengals. I'm still holding out for Joe Burrow. <laughs> Raiders and Titans. Uh, I got to go Titans. Yeah, I'll go Titans. Saints and Panthers. Saints. Yeah, Saints. Ravens, Patriots. Patriots. Ravens. Lions, Vikings. Lions. We should have had them on here. <laughs> we well, we asked them their predictions. Oh yeah, they get and they gave them. You know, I think Lions are gonna. Yeah. Buy a field goal. Okay. Eagles and Commanders. I'm gonna go with the Commanders. No, I'm gonna go with the Eagles. Yeah, I'm gonna go with the Eagles. Chiefs and Colts. Got to go with the Chiefs. Yep. Texans Bears. I'm gonna go with the Bears. No, I'm the Texans. Texans. I'm gonna go with the Texans. I lied. Jaguars Chargers. Chargers. Yep. Rams Cardinals. Rams. Yep. Packers, Bucks, Bucks. I gotta go with my boy, my boy, yeah, uh, Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> it's a little bit of you know strife. Falcons, Seahawks, Falcons. Yeah. 49ers, Broncos. I'm, I'm, I have faith in Jimmy G. I'm gonna go 49ers. I yeah, I'll go with 49ers. And then Cowboys and Giants. I'm gonna go with my boys at the Giants. Yeah, you know what? For the first time ever, I'll, I'll go with the Giants. All right, those are our predictions. Well, do you have anything else you want to add to the show? Nope, not really. All right, ladies and gentlemen, well, thank you for watching. As always, please subscribe. You can find us wherever you get your podcasts, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or subscribe to our YouTube channel. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Penford Sports. We thank you for watching, and we will see you next week.